Euphoria Season 2, the highly anticipated season for the very popular HBO series, but does it live up to the hype? Before I get into it, I need to say that this will be full of spoilers for Euphoria Season 2. I'm not going to talk about each episode and what happens, but I'm going to touch on things that are definitely spoilers, so you have been warned. I actually didn't watch Euphoria until this year. I remember when Season 1 was premiering, I was actually living in LA, and I remember how popular the show was. And for the last two and a half years, so many people recommended this show to me. Like, you have no idea. This show is actually one of the most popular shows that HBO has ever produced. Even their worst shows have high production value. They always make sure the right people are behind the camera. HBO seems to really care about their series. So I was always open to Euphoria. I just never knew when it would be a good time to watch it. And so many more people are recommending it to me as of late. And I thought now would be a good time to watch, especially with season two premiering. And I'll talk about season one for a little bit. I really enjoyed it. I think the best parts about Euphoria is one, how it looks. That's what everyone always talks about. It's colorful. It's shot beautifully. I mean, some of the cinematography is actually very breathtaking. And I think the characters. I think the characters in this show are extremely interesting. And they're also extremely flushed out. You get most of their backstories in the first season. So whenever something happens, everything seems in character. And I think season one did a really great job of setting up these characters, a lot of these situations and scenarios and plot points moving forward for the series. Now for season two. I really enjoyed season two. Do I think it's as good as season one? Probably not. Overall, I will say season two probably has the best episode in the whole entire series and definitely some of the craziest moments in the series as well. I think maybe season one probably flowed a little bit better, and I do love character introductions. I love when things are introduced. I love all that. But I still really enjoyed season two. The reason I'm bringing this up now is because Euphoria probably has the biggest social media presence I've ever seen for a show. The only other show I can think of on top of my head that had this sort of presence whenever an episode would premiere was Game of Thrones. This feels a lot different though. I feel like it's all over Twitter, all over Instagram, whenever an episode's out, and then the memes just flood throughout the rest of the week. And it seemed like the reception that I was getting online was a mixed bag, but a lot of people seem to be really upset with this season. And there are some complaints, I understand, that I'll get into. But overall, I feel like, for the most part, it did a good job with building off of things that happened from season one, to some of these crazier moments, and like I said, it feels like it's still in character for all these characters that have been developed. Look, the running joke about Euphoria is that it's like Degrassi on meth or LSD, and it really is. Like, when I first watched season one, I was a little taken out how unrealistic it was that all these people were in high school. But as I watched the series, I seem to appreciate that a little bit more. I kind of like how over the top and sometimes ridiculous this town is the school like the scenarios are in because like all this shit that happens like that would never happen in high school unless i really had a boring high school experience or maybe i'm just old now but in a way it makes the show unique it makes it more interesting it makes it more engaging and i don't know why that would really be a complaint for some people like for example the second to last or i guess the last episode of season two was that giant play and that production value of that play was fucking unbelievable like so unbelievable that play probably cost like five hundred thousand dollars to make no fucking high school private or public or anything would be able to put on something like that but i'm glad they did that though because it feels right with this world that we're in in euphoria like i wouldn't want them to have a boring ass production of a play i want them to go over the top and just be crazy and it was a lot of fun to watch and there were some really great moments of that play so that, for me, is one of the biggest compliments I can give the show. At first, I didn't really like that aspect of it, but the more I watched it, the more I appreciated it, and it kept me more engaged with the show. It seemed like people felt like a lot of the crazy moments in the series just sort of happened out of nowhere. Like, Sam Levinson just felt like we had to have crazy shit happen, or people were not going to be interested, and I disagree. There's maybe one thing I thought was really out of left field, but then eventually, like, it made sense, it was developed well, was when Cassie and Nate got together in the first episode. I talked to a few people about that. I just thought when it first happened, it just seemed really out of nowhere, but it does fit well with Cassie's character because she's very dependent on people, she has dad issues, and that eventually made a little bit more sense. 
I guess my biggest issue with season two is that it seemed like there are so many characters and so many situations are going on and sometimes the show has problems balancing their interest in some of these characters and some of these plot points. It seems like a lot of things are brushed off to the side. Normally that could be fine. But in Euphoria season two, it seemed like a lot of those issues might have stemmed from production issues. Kat was apparently butting heads with Sam Levinson, so she's barely in it, and when she's in it, she's kind of fucking awful to Ethan, and she doesn't really do much. McKay apparently is butting heads too, and he's in it for literally one scene, and then he's gone. Granted, he might be back for season three or seasons after that, but still, he's just fucking gone. And I was told that Nate and Jules have had issues on set as well, and you can see in season two, they're never really on screen together ever. And that was one of the more interesting plot points in season one. So back to what I was saying, it seems like some of these plot points that were pushed off to the side, if it was a normal production, nothing was really going on, I could maybe see like where Sam Levinson is trying to go with that. But now with that all in mind, it seemed like it really halted production and they had to switch a lot of things. I know there was already a whole production because of COVID, but still, when you hear these things happen, and then you see what happens on screen, you can't help but think about that stuff. But I still think everything they focused on in season two was really interesting. I thought everything with Nate and Cassie just gave me so much anxiety. I fucking love Fesco and Lex. Lexco, oh, they're just the fucking best. And everything with Rue. I mean, everything they did with Rue was fantastic. I mean, that one episode where she goes off the fucking rails and causes so much property damage and maybe got someone killed, I don't even know. But that was probably my favorite episode of the series, and Zendaya gives an excellent performance in that episode. She does an excellent job this whole entire season, and I know she won an Emmy for season one. If she won an Emmy for season one, I think for sure she deserves to win an Emmy for season two. Everything with Kyle Jacobs I thought was extremely interesting as well. That backstory we got of him I thought was really well done and everything he does makes sense for his character. All these things that happen just make sense. I wasn't really surprised by it, not like in a bad way, like it's like I see why these characters are doing these things. When these shocking moments happen, they feel earned. I will talk about the finale now, and this is definitely getting the most mixed feelings online for sure. I thought it was a fine finale. I think there's a lot of things that were really well done. There's some things I question. The one thing I question is back to Cal Jacobs. No, good for Nate for making the right decision and not killing his dad and maybe turning him into the police. But if that's really the end of Cal Jacobs and that's really all we're going to get for the rest of the series, I think that'd be extremely disappointing. I think there's so much more to tell with his character and that relationship with Nate. I think that was one of the more interesting parts about the show. But I think everything else in the finale concluded well. Maybe I want a little bit more of Cassie and Maddie fighting, but... I saw online that people are upset that a lot of things weren't answered. And that's one of my biggest compliments for the finale. I don't want my season two finale to answer all my questions about a series that's clearly going to get a lot more seasons moving forward. If this was a series finale, yeah, I'd be a little pissed off that a lot of things weren't answered. But a lot of things are open-ended. I would be shocked if the lady with the Crocs and the duffel bag does not come back to bite Rue in the ass at some point. I would be shocked, and that's one of the biggest complaints I've seen online. I'm sure she'll be back. We're going to get answers about Fezco and R.I.P. Ashtray, but that's all going to be answered too. There's all these questions that are left open, and I'm so happy they did that. I don't want to go in the next season knowing how all these things already happened. I'm anticipating season three now because I want to see what happens to these characters. That's how you end a finale. That's how you keep your audience engaged. So yeah, Euphoria season two isn't perfect. I don't think it was ever going to be. There's a lot of issues that it has with juggling all these storylines and characters. And that probably has to do with some of the production issues. And if that's the case, that's really disappointing. But overall, it's still shot beautifully, even though there's some points in the season I think that Sam Levinson is literally just trying to suck his own dick. It's still wonderfully acted. There's still a lot of interesting things that happen this season. There's a lot of things that come to a breaking point, but there's also a lot of things that keep us engaged moving forward. And that's how you're supposed to do a second season of a show. Is it as good as season one? I don't think so. I think season one flows a little bit better, and there's some more interesting parts in season one, and... I don't really appreciate on season two, some characters are completely just gone. But 
Season 2 still has some of the crazier moments in the whole entire series and some of the best episodes in the series. So overall, I think it was a satisfying second season for Euphoria. I'm going to give Season 2 of Euphoria 7.5 Davy Daves. I'm anticipating Season 3. I don't think it will take as long for Season 3 to come out. I know everyone waited like two and a half years. I don't think it will take that long because... Hopefully, fingers crossed, there's no sort of halt production for something horrible that could happen. But I did see it's coming out in 2024, so that is two years from now. So maybe we do have to wait two and a half years, and that would kind of fucking suck. So, Euphoria Season 2. Let me know what you guys thought of it. If you've seen it, I'm curious to hear. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Click here to see more of Dave Day's takes. <laughs>